affordable and backed by a 10-year warranty program. We've had the opening tap a little early, but here we are. First possession, Indiana. Hoosiers in their road reds tonight. Coverdale runs their offense. Tom Coverdale, outstanding junior guard out of Noblesville, Indiana. Down low to Jared Jeffries, who never got there. Aluma Namaka with the steal for Marquette. They are one tough defensive club. They really are. They, uh, they get after you on every possession. They stay down. They talk. It hurts them to be scored against, and that's what you want defensively. Jared Jeffries getting that steal. Coverdale straight ahead. And Newton gets fouled. Jeff Newton going to the glass, and Marquette retreating back on defense, fouling him. A couple of guys to key on. Dane Fight, red hot from three-point range, six of eight in their opening win the other night. And for Marquette, one of the best little point guards in the country, Cordell Henry, 5'10", senior. He's been starting for the last three years, and he is a load for Tom Crean, third year at Marquette. Crean, a former Judd Heathcote and Tom Izzo assistant. Well, he's really turned this program around, and he's getting more athletic players in Milwaukee than they've had in a while. Here's Cordell Henry. He is one of the strongest little guys you'll ever see at 5'9", 5'10". He's been shooting the three great for Marquette. And here's the man Indiana's got a key on, Dwayne Wade. Well, he's got one of the Big Ten best perimeter defenders guarding him right now to start this game in fight. He finds a way. Dwayne Wade averaging 23 in his first three collegiate games, including the 30 with eight rebounds and seven assists he dropped on Tennessee two nights ago. Bob, he's a combination of quickness and strength with that basketball in his hand. That's a real challenge for Fife tonight defensively. Here's Fife being watched by Odarte Blankson on the wing. They're going to get out and guard him. He had a great three-point shooting night against the Sea Wolves of Alaska Anchorage with six of eight. Shot clock at seven. Can he hit another one? That's the first three-point miss by Jeffries this year. He had made his first three. Here's Cordell Henry for Marquette. Little 14-footer, back iron with it. Guess who on the rebound? Dwayne Wade. All loose Hoosiers have it. He's a pure shooter as Hornsby. Along with that one as Kyle couldn't knock it down. Cordell Henry back the other way for Marquette. They'll call on one of their 70 or so plays they can run out of their pro set when they get in that half-court offense. Yeah, and they have another 30 that puts them up around 100. They can draw up in the huddle just as a reminder and go out and run. I mean, this is a club that is in January form already, Marquette, as far as what they have in place. Watch Wade, that's what I'm talking about. This is where the game, I think, will be decided tonight. If Wade can do that this evening, Marquette, I think, advances to the championship game, and he is a load to try to keep up with for 40 minutes. This kid's in great condition. Only practiced last year, didn't play. Coverdale on top. Newton, well off with that jumper. Nice job by the Eagles of blocking out Jared Jeffries that time. Yeah, last year, Dwayne Wade got to live a fantasy life on the basketball court. And there's a holding foul on Jeff Newton. He got to pretend he was every great player in Conference USA. And during practice, because he was a partial qualifier when he couldn't play, he got to emulate all the great players working against Brian Wardle and the Marquette offense. Well, that's what developed him, I think, so much, because he and Wardle had some serious battles in that gym every afternoon. I mean, this kid is a, a star in the making. He's humble, he's competitive, he's a hard worker. Wade almost traveling. Aluma Namaka misfiring on the three. Namaka's a guy from that four spot who can step out and shoot from long range on occasion. Three minutes in, barely enters any scoring. Indiana does not have a field goal. Hornsby trying to take care of that. Short with the three, off the hands of John Harris. Hoosiers will keep it. You'll see Marquette in that tough man-to-man -man defense all evening long, and it's not a get out and overplay, deny, run through passes, but a real premium on checking you as you cut through the lane. They have great vision. They stay down. They talk. All those fine principles that are talked about in coaching clinics across the country, these guys do it. Well, when you think about Indiana, you think about pure shooting and fundamental defense. There's the pure shooting, but Fife is short. Look at the hustle there, and that's Hornsby who doesn't always contribute a whole lot other than shooting the basketball, and Mike Davis has to love that play. 
Right now, Marquette shows a little bit of a 1 2 2 zone look. High low. Old UCLA look there as Jeffries got it down to Jeff Newton. And Jeff Newton has all three of Indiana's points. Indiana has a height advantage on the interior defenders of Marquette. They're going to run in 6'9, 6'10, 6'11 kids, and that's what got him the high low look. There's Wade working off the pick and roll by Blankson. Hanging, oh. scoring. Dwayne Wade with four points. Very impressed with his control of his body. That was a great example of it. He took some contact, kept his balance and his composure in the air. I mean, he is really something to watch off that drive. Hornsby open for three. When he's that open, he'll seldom miss. Kyle Hornsby, six out of 13 from three-point range with that make. Bob, you got to make Hornsby a dribbler. Three out of four shot attempts every game or a three-point shot from that guy. Wade for Namaka. Cordell Henry way long on the three. Didn't even get iron. Ball touches the baseline. Odarte Blankson couldn't keep it in. A little stage fright by both clubs offensively here in this second semifinal game. The winner gets Gonzaga and early four and a half minutes in. Hoosiers lead it by a score of 6-4. Mike Davis, an outsider, if you will, from Alabama who got the Indiana job, and it's a little easier in his second year now. We have a whole summer to prepare for a season. Uh, give you time to grow as a coach. Last year I was thrown to the fire and I grew a lot just by being in the fire. Uh, there was a lot of sleepless nights. So uh, it's day and night now. <laughs> well, Mike, he had the fire suit on. He won 21 ball games last year, got the Hoosiers 10 and 6 in the Big Ten. They did go out first round, though, of the NCAA against Kent State of the Mid American Conference. Yeah, only that doesn't always sit very well in Bloomington. It's happened too much recently. Yeah, five out of the last uh, seven years they've made a first round exit, but only Thad Mata had more wins last year than Mike Davis among first year head coaches. He also set a Big Ten record in 38% field goal percentage defense. Mata at Butler, of course, and Dane Fife. Taking the charge there with a very heads-up play. He could see the pass coming. That's a situation where the defensive player has the advantage. Well, the feet were set, and he gave way to step, and he didn't avoid the contact. And Coverdale, Five, Hornsby, those perimeter players for Indiana, they are high IQ basketball guys. They'll make two or three plays like that a game. Only one substitution in this game so far. Terry Sanders in for Marquette. He's one of their long and athletic sort of guys at both ends. Turnovers, only one for Indiana, four by Marquette. We've had four lead changes in a 6-4 to four game. Here's Coverdale, driving, dishing, never got there. Odarte Blankson stepped right in front of Jeff Newton. Well, Marquette really good at collapsing when that dribble penetration occurs around that basketball. you got to meet the pass, and you got to have great vision when you have that ball in your hands against these guys in white. Five turnovers by Marquette, and that is not like them at all. Travis Diener, freshman guard out of Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, will check in. Nifty little player, and the big guy you're looking at, Scott Merritt, 6'10", sophomore. Tom Crean has really recruited the area well. Travis Diener, an honorable mention All-American, a lot of really good schools wanted him, and he stayed at home to play at Marquette. He leads the attack now. Diener, cousin, of course, Drake, who plays at DePaul. Drew at St. Louis U. Sanders the jump hook. Terry can't hit it. And he slaps it off the leg of what appeared to be his own teammate, Scott Merritt. It goes back to Indiana. Market has four or five interchangeable parts on the interior. You're talking about Namika and Merritt and Sanders. Towns and all those guys rotate in and give Tom Crean something different off the bench. Right now, number 40 Sanders in the game primarily as a defender on Jared Jeffries. Jared Odell enters the game for Indiana, coming off a career high 14 points against an Alaska Anchorage the other night. He's number 43, setting that high pick for Dane Fife. He skips it right out of bounds. Yikes. A total of four field goals between the clubs and nine turnovers now. I'm sure the Gonzaga coaching staff sitting around Sky in this game wondering, I don't think we can see much of anything we can figure out here yet. Diener, as they almost turned it over again. Cordell Henry on the wing. Penetrates, hangs, banks, and scores. Cordell Henry averaging 22 a game so far. 
He had 18 on three out of five from three-point range against Tennessee in the first game of this tournament. Henry's been a starter all four years. He's the most experienced guy on the floor for Marquette at the most important position, that point guard spot. Sanders created that steal for Henry. Diener misfires the three. Position underneath for Sanders. And we've got an Indiana foul that appears to be on Jared Odell. Things uh, a little ragged so far. Tomorrow at 7 Eastern on ESPN2, Dwight Feeney and the Syracuse defense try to shut down William Green and Boston College. At 745 Eastern on ESPN, bragging rights in the state of Georgia. David Green, the Bulldogs, against George Godsey and the Georgia Tech Ramblin' Wreck. That's one of college football's great rivalries. We saw a couple of those today. Log on to ESPN.com for more on NCAA football. And of course, as Merritt drives, misses the stuff, and it's coming back the other way with Donald Perry. Can't afford to miss those. The goal of every college basketball team in the nation today is to outscore the Colorado football team. How about that? Amazing what they did with Nebraska today. And this one will stay with Indiana on a double team out there. Coming in for Marquette, David Diggs, a senior guard. And Jeff Newton is back. Diggs a guy who gives them some good shooting ability. Catch and shoot guy. Look for him to launch one or two if he can get squared up. He's actually the best shooter in just a, a pure game of horse. I mean, you take Cordell Henry's three-point shots out of this team right now, and they're only 10 for 35 combined. Eight minutes in. And there's a bank. What a good piece of service there by Dane Fife. Jared Odell on the receiving end of some nice teammate room service there. David Diggs on the perimeter. Well, Marquette really running their stuff high on the floor right now. Indiana's kind of getting out and overplaying a little more than we've seen in the past. High pick by Sanders. Dick to the corner. The bouncer for Merritt. He finds his man. Sanders backdoor uncontested. Great vision there down on the baseline. They like Scott Merritt, the way he handles the ball. He's got a little finesse game underneath there. No hesitation. As soon as that double team came, boom, from one block to the other for an easy layup. Newton back to the basket. Skips it over the top. Five for three. Won't go for him. Fighting to keep that thing alive. Great work underneath by Kyle Hornsby. It results in a Marquette foul. Boy, Indiana can really shoot that basketball, though, Bob. They're shooting 50% from the field as a team, 55% from the three-point line coming in. So you'll see Marquette really getting out and challenging, getting hands in the face of shooters. Jeff Newton with his fourth corner tonight. A.J. Moye for Indiana. Sophomore guard out of Atlanta. He shot pretty well as a first-year player last year. High 40s in his field goal percentage. And a good night for Jeff Newton. He's got five. Hoosiers have nine. They lead the Eagles of Marquette by one. Marquette four for ten. Indiana three for ten. Two-point Hoosier lead in the first eight and a half minutes. Indiana right now chasing that ball in the perimeter, trying to double up. Look right here. Dribble draws two guys to him, and as a result, you've got to zone up from behind. Look at number 40, Terry Sanders from Marquette on the left side of your lane. He just goes right to the rim and gets an easy two points because of it. Indiana's going to double up that ball and chase it on the perimeter. They better get three guys zoning up in that lane to take away passes like that one right there. Indiana, 16 of 24. A school record for makes from three-point range the other night. Tonight, with someone guarding them, they're one for six. Defensive struggles so far. Cordell Henry down to Merritt. He'll go right side. A little too short on the banker. And then a miss from the other side as Diggs got pretty good offensive rebounding position. This will be Hornsby looking on top for Jared Odell. A curl to the right wing for Donald Perry. Newton forcing it, swishing it. And Jeff Newton with seven points early. That's huge. Uh, he's got to be a scorer this year to offset that 19 points and seven rebounds that Kirk Haston took with him. He's the guy capable of doing it. And they say just because he's a quiet guy, don't question his fire. He's got a little bit of it. They get him to play hard for 40 minutes. He will get the goaltend. It'll be a basket for Cordell Henry. Four for the point guard as you had 5-10 going at 6-9 there. You know what, Henry's got great go-ahead speed. He's not terrific side-to-side, -side, but he understands pace, change of speed on you, and at 5'9", he knows how to free himself up. 
Didn't overpenetrate that time to get a shot off. Top of your screen, defending, going down there. Dwayne Wade, who just checked back in for Tom Green. Had an early start of four points. Here's Newton again. He's been their go-to guy so far. Where's Jared Jeffries? He's on the bench. A finger roll too strong for A.J. Moye. Right now, without Jeffries, Hoosier's looking pretty good. And that time, Wade, he was looking to the iron for his move before he corralled that pass. And Diggs with a steal. Diener does a 360. He's got Diggs to his right and to his left, Namaka. Aluma, he is blocked. Newton just sitting in there, swatting people away. Hornsby for Odell. Too short on the bank. Over the baseline, it's going back to Marquette. Coverdale coming back. Dane Fife now coming back for Indiana. Fife has not scored at 20 in the Indiana opener of this tournament against Alaska Anchorage the other night. I'll tell you what, it's not pretty basketball right now, but if you're a head coach and you know that one of these two teams is on your schedule this year, you're already thinking it will be a real pain in the backside playing against them. They take away everything you're trying to do. No clear cuts through the lane. They check off on every shot. Near it for Diggs. Feeling his way in. Too strong. Might have been expecting more contact than he got. Tom Coverdale transitions for the Hoosiers. This is Odell. And he'll step out at 6'8 and look over the top of that defense. Now he goes to the block as it comes up high to Newton. They're really using their big guys outside tonight, Jimmy. Well, all season long, Indiana is not going to take their big Bob and set them on that low block for 35 seconds of possession. They're going to step them out, utilize them in their movement. They're not the big physical sit on you type kids on that low block. We'll have to get Newton out of there now. Coming in for Marquette, that's Odarte Blankson. And sitting down with two fouls, Jeff Newton. Fouls the only thing that's been able to stop him. That gets Jared Jeffries back in for IU. Diener running the point now with Dwayne Wade. Looking to penetrate. Taking a little contact. Can't roll it home. And uh, John Harris swats that out of the hands of Jeffries. It goes back to Indiana. Well, I'll tell you what. Both squads right now, it's one shot and head back to the defensive end. The guys in red and the guys in white, when the shot goes, all five are in motion. They're getting bodies on bodies around that rim area. Little swings it for five. Blankson out on him. Regarde Blankson's got a good wingspan out there. He'll cause five some problems. Dane got around him. Eventually to Odell. His jumper won't go. A.J. Moye, he got the rebound, then he traveled. He's a good rebounding guard. Averaging five a game so far, but he shuffled his feet. Half of his rebounds on the year and last year are on the offensive end. 6'3", he's quick, aggressive to that rim. Plays with that warrior mentality that you and I love to see. He had eight rebounds against Kent State in the NCAA tournament. Harris keeps it barely on top for Travis Diener. Diener really highly recruited last year in high school. Utah, Wisconsin, a lot of clubs were after this kid. Illinois took a look at him, as did Iowa State. Pretty good roster there. Way short as Blankson on the shot. Harris turns it. It's kind of like the Red Sea parting for him right to the hoop. John Harris first basket. Each team averaging a point a minute in this game. Uh, Harris uh, only had two rebounds in 27 minutes the other night against Tennessee. He's got to get seven or eight a game for Marquette to be at their best this season. Life looking for Jeffries and Namaka denying on the wing. You know, it's almost a, a game right now. Who's going to break first? You can't do it. When you're playing someone that's a solid defensive with these two clubs are, you've got to be patient. You've got to run your stuff and just keep fighting it. Little give and go. Oh, got it back. A whistle and a foul. Going to be against Marquette. It'll be a Luma Namaka, the young man from Uppsala, Sweden. Same hometown as Oklahoma State's Frederick John Zan. Both playing in Division I and going to the line. It'll be Jared Odell. Indiana had an impressive opening road win at Charlotte, 65-61 last week, coming from behind. Odell with his third point of the night. As mentioned, a career-high 14 with five rebounds, an assist in 18 quality minutes against Alaska Anchorage Wednesday night. He's got four tonight. 
Mike Davis in a real struggle with Tom Green's Eagles, Indiana by two. Indiana 14, Marquette 12, and the winner of this one gets Gonzaga in the championship game tomorrow night. Second semifinal game here at the Great Alaska Shootout. Bob Carpenter and Jimmy Dykes. How about that Gonzaga club that we saw earlier tonight, Jimmy? They're becoming a bracket buster, whether it be November yep. or March. Well, and they're going to have their hands full with whoever advances in this one because defensively, that's what's going on in this ball game right now. And both clubs playing man-to-man -man defense. There's four or five things I look for in a game like this, and these clubs are doing it. They move on the flight of the ball. They don't wait for the ball to be caught to adjust. They stay down. It's one shot and done. They talk the entire possession, and it hurts them to be scored against. Those are signs of great defensive clubs. Ooh, that hurts. Travis Diener with a three. His fourth in 10 attempts this year, and that gets Marquette on top, 15 to 14. I feel their pain. Yeah. Diener's a guy that has to shoot the ball this year for him because, again, outside of Cordell Henry, they don't have a proven, consistent perimeter threat right now. Off the long miss, Odell got the rebound. Great drive. Tom Coverdale. What a good, big, experienced guard he is. Here's Wade, hopping through traffic. Out of control, you might say. He took on three Hoosiers there. Jeffrey straight ahead, and it goes right to Namaka of Marquette. Indiana by one. Jared Jeffries getting on Odal. It was his fault. Diener working off a high pick and roll by Namaka. He'll take that shot when you give it to him, along with it. And Coverdale the rebound. Seven of 21 is Marquette. Five out of 16, Indiana. And as Jimmy mentioned earlier, there are no second chances. How about that stop by Aluma Namaka? On the wing, Wade, waiting for three, spinning for two, and banking a little short. Dane Fife, and somebody took a slap at him. It might have been Odarte Blankson. That will be his second. More college football tomorrow on ESPN. We'll start you at noon. They call it the backyard brawl in the Big East. The Panthers and the Mountaineers, Pitt and West Virginia, Penn State and Michigan State, and Joe Paterno's club still has some bowl hopes. They visit T.J. Duggan in Michigan State. That's a big menu. Tomorrow on ESPN, Big East, Big Ten. Well, we could tell by talking to both the uh, coaching staffs prior to this one that they were up all night watching film, breaking it down. Very prepared. They take a lot of pride in taking you out of what you want to do, and that's what we're seeing. The game five open for three. When it went in, he pumped his fist. It took him almost 15 minutes to score in this game after his early flurry of scoring Wednesday night. Diener with the bouncer. John Harris, a lot stronger this year, but he backed in and got the charge, and that'll be his first. Well, great feet defensively by Jared Jeffries on that low block. As soon as Harris got it, he got low, he spread out, got those dogs set, and took the, took the blow. So Jared Jeffries has not scored tonight. Fife just did score. Coverdale one field goal. Kyle Hornsby won three. It's been Odell and Newton combining for 11 of Indiana's 19 so far. Away from the ball, a whistle. Three second call or a foul. It's going to be a foul. And that'll go against George Leach, their 6'11 sophomore center who just checked in. I'm telling you, Bob, I've, I've coached in games like this, and you cannot flinch. You can't flinch as a coach. You can't flinch as a player. You just got to keep grinding it out, knowing it's going to be like this for 40 minutes. There's a travel. Todd Townsend, freshman out of New Trier High School in Chicago, turning and shuffling his feet before he made his move. Diener will leave, and you see Cordell Henry back to replace him for Marquette. Not like the Eagles to turn it over eight times tonight. Ten the entire round one of the game against Buzz Peterson's Volunteers of Tennessee. Cordell Henry's already rested more in this game than he got to last year. He averaged 37 minutes a game. That's important for Diener to be able to spell him for, you know, eight, nine, ten minutes of ball game this year. Jeffries, how smooth was that? Putting it on the floor. Creating his own shot. 
He's averaging 16 a game, and he's got two now. You know, I talked to NBA scouts, and their, their, their question right now is, does Jared Jeffries play smooth like you just described, or does he borderline on not playing hard enough at times? I think his effort is there. He's just awfully smooth, that 6'10 frame. Cordell Henry, Harris trying to get the rebound, and it'll stay with Marquette. 355 in a very tough physical and low scoring first half. Well, temperatures in the 30s or so here in Anchorage today. A beautiful day to look at those mountains. Unbelievable scenery here in our 49th state. We are as far north as Helsinki, Finland, and as far west as Honolulu and still mooseless for the trip. We are still searching the elusive Alaskan yeah, moose. There's a thousand of them in this Anchorage Bowl area and we haven't seen one. And we've been, <laughs> we, we've been looking. We're gonna find one by tomorrow. How about this? If we don't, we're gonna share with the viewers our philosophy on the moose in this area. It will be something to, to hear. Stay tuned. Okay, folks, get off the edge of your seats now and relax. <laughs> we got 3.40 to go before halftime here. Dribble penetration for Todd Townsend. Weather taking some wild shots. Merritt missing a slam, missing a putback. And the Eagles can't get the lid off that rim down at that end. Biggest lead right now for Indiana, 21-15. You said earlier the goal for college basketball teams today is outscored Colorado in football. How about if we just combine? We'll just take combined points tonight. We might have a shot. Hornsby on the perimeter. Up defense there by Todd Townsend. Switching it for Leach against Merritt. Left-handed jump hook. Uh, Merritt, nice stop and the defensive rebound. Here comes Cordell Henry. Wade, Lee. they are really closing on him, and Dwayne Wade turns it over. Hey, what, in a game like this, Indiana had that ball down here. Leach caught it, and he bounced himself out of a shot. You better take it and go right to the rim because the defense is coming at you. <laughs> Nine turnovers by Marquette. One less than their entire first game against Tennessee. Four by Wade, a rather alarming number for one player who's not a point guard. Donald Perry, freshman out of Tallulah, Louisiana, running the offense now for Indiana. They're going to double down on Leach, and that results in the turnover. Good deflection there by Todd Townsend, who is there with Merritt. Kent needs a couple of makes here. Scott Merritt in front of Leach, back to Cordell Henry, all Conference USA third team last year. He averaged 15 a game once conference play commenced. But what teams have a tendency to do when they're struggling offensively is to speed up. And you can't do that. You can't play the game too quickly. You got to stay within your character, set solid screens, and just keep working. Jeffries underneath after. George Leach stuck Dwayne Wade at the other end. Here's Wade, little hesitation, and he will get the charge. Dwayne Wade with his first foul, and Indiana obviously keying on him and doing a big time defensive job. They have stopped him cold. Watch the mistake that Indiana makes offensively when Leach picks it up. Now, watch, you got four guys just standing, nobody's cut. And again, you've got to stay with all your principles. If you have one small breakdown against either of these clubs on the offensive end, they're going to chew you up defensively. 21 turnovers combined in the first half. Indiana now has more with 11. Hoosiers operate with a six-point lead, though. It's Hornsby on the perimeter against Todd Townsend. Around to Dane Fife, one dribble, the shot, and it rolls in for him. That was a deuce, and Dane Fife with five so far. Boy, him shooting that basketball is really good news for the Hoosier fans this year. Merritt straight ahead, Namaka. He's been held scoreless so far. Turns and right over Jared Jeffries with a very good move. Namaka is known for his quick first step. We just saw it there. Well, that's how they played in their first round game. They would catch it on that block and with quickness, boom, just explode on you. They weren't waiting, they weren't hesitating. Final minute, first half. Hornsby well off with the three. And Marquette, Namaka over the baseline, and it'll go back to the Hoosiers. Bill Pedos in our Sports Center in game studio coming up at the half and upset at the top. Yet we're talking about college football, Huskers and the Buffs. Conference USA shakeup in football. Louisville had a rough time in Fort Worth and the NIT championship. 
Jim Beheim, the master of postseason tournaments the last couple of years. They won it up here a year ago. Sure did. Hey, what, if you're a pure basketball fan, just from the X's and O's standpoint, you've watched this first half, and halftime makes you want to get up and take a charge in your own living room. That's, <laughs> that's the commitment these guys are playing with. 23-17, Indiana. That one won't go. Odell Skies keeps it alive. A fresh 35, and now there is no shot clock. Indiana can play for the last shot, already leading by six. And this is one of those use it or lose it timeouts, so Mike Davis will take advantage. Hey, Jimmy, how about the field we've got lined up for the Great Alaska Shootout next year? Best I've seen up here. Yeah, really good. I mean, the headliners, Michigan State, Oklahoma State, right off the bat. Wyoming, now the Mountain West. Dee McLean's uh, club should be loaded again. This uh, tournament has been a springboard for clubs to not only advance to have a great season this year, but the following year a lot of times. You look at Cincinnati, Michigan State, Oklahoma State, Wyoming. Those are the four that jump out at me right off the bat. For some I will ever get a chance, if we're here, to see the Lumberjacks in person. They were a substitution for Oregon, who was supposed to come and fold out. Tom Crean and Marquette. Mike Davis and in Indiana, a couple of Midwest schools battling it out here up in Anchorage, Alaska. 20 seconds to go, first half. You expect a special set scoring play set up by Indiana in that timeout. Fife, Diener all over him. Eight seconds to go. Hornsby, the entry. Fife deflected by Merritt. Cordell Henry, two seconds. One, he gets it away, and it just fails to go. He was taking serious contact. 23-17, Indiana at the half. And Bill Pito, a low-scoring grinder of a first half here in Alaska. Well, the Bald Eagles on display here. Symbols of our country. Golden Eagles taking on the Hoosiers of Indiana. In the first half, Indiana shoots 33%. Marquette shoots 28. It's a grinder in the first 20 minutes and one of the lowest scoring first halves ever. Jimmy Dykes talked about it with Tom Crean. Tom, I think you knew coming in that points were going to be difficult to come by on, on both ends of the floor. What do you do offensively this half to try to get on track? Well, it helps start making our layups. We're missing a lot of one and two point shots right now. We're not getting nearly enough driving kick baskets. We're not getting nearly enough inside out type of plays where we drive it and we get the kick. And we've got it. We've done a good, decent job of getting inside. We just haven't finished. So we know we got to do a little bit better job defensively. We've got to keep challenging shooters. We got to come down and get a little transition going for us. Get a little driving kick. You know, create a little for others and try to make it better for us right now. Yeah, I like watching it because I'm a defensive fan. Well, I like the defense. <laughs> defense is good, and they're playing well. They're playing hard, but we've got to get some movement now. We played like quicksand today. All right, buddy. Thank good luck, Bob. Second half underway. First possession, Marquette Harris rejected, but he took a foul from Jared Jeffries before he got the shot away. And for Jeffries, that'll be his first. Not a whole lot to tell you as far as individual offensive numbers. There's your score, the field goal percentage right at 33 for Indiana, less far. Marquette, 22 turnovers after a rash of Marquette turns early. Eagles got some steals. Three-pointers really not a factor in this game. John Harris, third point of the night. A couple of rebounds to go with his scoring in 11 first-half minutes. By the way, 17 points allowed by Indiana tonight. Third lowest total ever in this tournament. Maryland gave up 15 in 1984. Missouri gave up 14 in 1985. So the Eagles get what they need, a couple of points right out of halftime, and it's a four-point game. Jimmy back at the table now as we watch Dane Fife operate on the perimeter. Bob, this is the game that if you're Indiana, you look for a guy like Jared Jeffries and say, you know what? Let me get that ball in my hands. Let me start making plays for us. I'm the guy that everyone's talking about as a preseason All-American. Let me prove it right now. This would be the type game to do it in. Coverdale straight ahead to him. Little jumper, high arc, too long with it. And the rebound, Odarte blanks it. Cordell Henry runs with it for Marquette. Hooks it down low. Harris, a lot more active this year. Makeable shot. He just couldn't finish. Another one of those two footers that Tom Crean talked about with me at halftime. You've got to complete it. 
coach. He'd rather see a bomb one off the back glass that hits the rim and goes out rather than one that never even gets there. Newton back to the basket. Coverdale penetrates, hooks it around, lots of traffic. It'll stay with Indiana. The Hoosiers will check in Donald Perry, their freshman guard. Perry, a very athletic and quick young man, a driver, a finisher, just 18 years of age earlier this month. Last year's Louisiana Mr. Basketball following the grand footsteps of Chris Duhon. Fight for three. Off with it. Rebound ripped down by John Harris of Marquette. Hasn't been much chance for transition points tonight. Cordell Henry high off the glass. Jared Jeffries pulling it down for the Hoosiers. You know, I like the aggressive push throw out of Henry. I mean, he had even numbers, took it all away, just couldn't get it to drop. Harris right out of the hands of Jeff Newton with a great steal. Guys playing in this game will be flinching in their sleep tonight. No room to operate. Here's Wade, baseline left. He finishes. Dwayne Wade, after a tough first half, four points, three rebounds, but five turnovers. Indiana He's got lost, six now. Bob Indiana lost vision of Wade uh, on the weak side of the floor. The defensive help was late rotating over, and it cost him a bucket. He goes back to within two, but only for a moment, as Jeff Newton cans points number eight and nine today. I mean, I'm really impressed with the ability of Indiana to slow down this Marquette set play offense. They truly have about 70 different set plays in their arsenal they can call on right now, and Indiana's covering them awfully well. Wade, one-on-one. -on -one. How about this kid? Eight for him. He's just a sophomore, partial qualifier. Could not play last year, but if he keeps working hard in the classroom like he has been doing, he'll be able to play all four years at Marquette. That's one of the best rules the NCAA put in several years ago. Jared Jeffries in traffic, trying to get away from Namaka and John Harris. Well, here's what Marquette has decided to do to start this second half. Getting the ball in the hands of their best driver, take it hard to that rim, and at least start getting himself to the free throw stripe. And Wade's the guy that can do it. He's got all the strength, the foot spin, the, the quick move, and the, the tough shot mentality to keep Marquette right in this ball game. Another giveaway. Wade Henry, the trailer. Cordell Henry finishes. Dwayne Wade looking for his senior teammate. And the Eagles come alive to come back and tie the game. Tenth steal tonight by Marquette. And Mike Davis wants a timeout. It's the first called by a coach. The 30 becomes a full timeout. We're tied now at 25. Well, Jimmy and I, our entire ESPN crew, would certainly concur with that. <laughs> Great people up here. They've treated us wonderfully. We've enjoyed our second visit to Anchorage after being up here a year ago. Bob, I talked earlier in a game like this, you cannot flinch, and that's what Donald Perry does. He just makes a real soft pass, and Marquette runs through it, and then Indiana doesn't sprint to transition defense, and they give up a layup because of it. Mike Davis comes up off the bench, calls a timeout, and addresses it. Pretty and good defensive the... numbers there. Steals into double figures. Forcing 14 Indiana turnovers. And it was Tom Crean's Eagles who mishandled the ball so frequently early. They've taken care of that part of their game, and we're back even at 25. You know, you hear people talk a lot about being strong with the basketball. This is a game that you must do that. You've got to catch it with two hands. You've got to rip it through and get in a triple threat position. When you break, you've got to break hard. I mean, every little thing on the offensive end, you better execute, or you're not going to have that ball long. Wayne Wade with that deflection. Indiana will keep it. Shot clock down to seven. They'll work Hornsby out high to receive it. Wayne Wade on him. Fight. They close on him. Shot clock at two. On the run. Dean Fight. Quite a shot. And he's got seven tonight. Great clock awareness by Dean Fight. That's that experience. Again, he's a 6'4 senior guard. He's played in a ton of basketball games. Namaka looking for a back cut. It's Wade. Hangs. Banks can't score. Harris can't. And it's tipped in underneath by Dwayne Wade. Missing the initial shot and never giving up. He's really a quick jumper. He's one of those guys that can jump while other people are thinking about jumping. Odell. Bad angle. Glass got him. Jeffries gets the rebound. He hangs and scores. Jared Jeffries, only his second field goal of the night. The 
Indiana by two. Some offensive things starting to happen here now. Here's Jeffries way away from the basket. Only 27, 28 feet away. That'll be his second foul of this half and of the game. Four and a half minutes out of halftime. Marquette storm back. Hoosiers and Jeffries, though, by two. Who will meet Gonzaga tomorrow night? Indiana 29, Marquette 27. We've got the championship game tomorrow night, 12.30 a.m. at Gonzaga. Dan Dickow, big game today. Jimmy, he had 24, almost single-handedly beat Texas. He's as clever as there is. He can do things going both directions with, with equal quickness and equal bounce in his step. This is a shot of the game. The hang, he draws it back, avoids the contact and the foul, and gets the thing to drop. And again, I think Jason Williams, the best point guard in the eastern part of the country. Dan Dickow, the best point guard in the west. That shot was in the last minute of the game. And they won it by three over Texas, 67-64. I know a lot of folks right now might be saying, what about Jason Gardner at Arizona? Second best point guard in the western part of the United States. Dickow is the best. A lot of people would agree. A lot of pro scouts are here. Guys whose opinion we respect like George Felton and Walter Davis. Yep. They would concur with that. They out-rebounded Texas, a bigger Texas team by 12. I don't know how they do that time after time. And a couple of their big guys, Zach Gord and Corey Violet, both had double-doubles in that game. You don't expect that against a physical bunch of athletes like the Longhorns. Hornsby rattles out the three. Namaka the rebound for Marquette. Five minutes out of halftime, Hoosiers by two. Dwayne Wade, and that's another stuff. That's, I think, the third dunk missed by Marquette, and then double dribble in the backcourt by Kyle Hornsby. The point that Tom Green will make to his troops here is in a, in a game where points are so difficult to earn, you've got to make sure. Don't go for the spectacular play. If you have to get it, come down and go back up, but you've got to finish. Namaka, a very reliable upperclassman. 15 turnovers now by Indiana. Well, look at Fife really denying that ball back to Wade right now. He's the guy. Here he Jeffrey's got the steal, but as you mentioned, good assist by the guy not right there. Yeah. Again, Fife, a lot of people feel like, and I agree, that he's the best perimeter defender in the Big Ten. Everdale on the perimeter looking at Cordell Henry. A physical mismatch between those point guards. Fife for Coverdale. Off to the left with the three. Into the Indiana bench. It'll belong to Marquette. Awfully impressed with the, the humble spirit, the ability to communicate with just a select few words out of Mike Davis this week. I mean, that's a guy that prides himself in hard work. Nothing prideful about that guy, and he has done an outstanding job stepping into what may have been one of the most difficult coaching situations maybe in the last 50 years of college basketball, what he did last year. Namaka, yes, it goes. And yes, I agree with you, sir. Taking over for Bob Knight, who won 661 games in 29 years. Three national championships. get to Jeffries. Bob, I'm telling you, there's a lot of teams in the country that will stay down, talk, do all those things defensively the first four or five minutes of a game. And we're deep into this one, and both clubs are still getting it done. Marquette looking for the lead here. Merritt, too soft with it. Wade, did he get his timeout? I think he did. He was flying out of bounds, and he got the officials' attention to get the timeout got to be able to elevate to pull that off. You know what? We, we talked uh, yesterday at dinner, you and I did, and this sums it up. You asked me about Marquette, and I said two words. Play hard. A lot of people think, well, everybody plays hard. No, they do not. You and I watch a lot of basketball games, and very few coaches and very few teams understand what it means to play hard and lay it on the line every game, and Marquette has caught my eye in that area. Wayne Wade under 50% shooting. Fife right at it. And a lot of turnovers by Dwayne Wade. And if you folks ever doubted what Jimmy and I talk about over dinner, now you know. We talk <laughs> hoops. We are here for hoops, and that's all we're worried about. And we're going to have a good championship game tomorrow night. It'll be interesting with Tom Crean's defense against that high-powered Gonzaga ability to score. Well, deflections is an area that Tom Crean's staff, uh, they, 
they tally up when they go back and grade the film. It's not so many steals, but it's how many times they get hand on ball and disrupting what the other team's trying to do. And if Indiana makes it, Jimmy, I think you and I are a lot more impressed with their defense than we were 48 yeah. hours ago. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it, it was hard to tell, first of all, because of who they were playing. Nothing against them. Alaska Anchorage, but you just can't get a real good feel for what's going on. But they're more physical. They're committed to the defensive end of the floor like I knew they would be because of the numbers they threw up last season. What a good move that was by Scott Merritt. First Marquette lead since it was 15 to 14. Tom Green talked about Indiana last year when they played against Michigan State. And he said, I'm telling you, blow for blow for 40 minutes, they matched those guys in a very physical battle. Coverdale straight ahead. Merritt got there a little bit late as he was defending Jeff Newton. Scott Merritt with his first. Tell you what, Indiana's got a couple of real tough non-conference games coming up in December. They play December the 8th against Ball State. We already know what those guys have done this year. And December the 29th, Butler comes to the Hoosier Classic. Now, Butler's a team, I'm telling you, out of the Horizon League. Coach Todd Licklider's got those guys going again. Ryland Hangey, 6'6", 240-pound stud, and the, probably the player of the year in that league, Thomas Jackson at guard. Butler is a squad that you better watch. They, they're going to be another Gonzaga this year. Yeah, and that's after they go to Indianapolis to play some small school from the state just south of them by the name of yeah. Kentucky. They Keep play Louisville Butler. in February as well. Here's Merritt turning, stepping, keeping that pivot, banking. Namaka tried to slam the follow, and Coverdale comes away for Indiana tie game. 12 and a half minutes to go. Coverdale dribbling the three, and that's five for him. Bob, if you're an inside guy in this game, you can't make a power move to get your shot off and then try to finesse it at the end. Power and finesse don't go together on the interior. You've got to power it all the way into the rim. Namaka just inside the line, draining it beautifully. Aluma Namaka has his average now of six. He's a power forward who can step outside and knock him down. And we just saw that. And then if you come out to get him, he can drive by you with that great first step. Yeah, he's the third best driver on the team. He can actually play anything from the two through the five spot. He's versatile blue blazer. Merritt coming up with the steal. Henry off to the races. Off the glass. Cordell Henry. That's what I'm talking about. He made a tough basket because he powered it all the way through the release of the shot. He didn't get his body into the defender and then try to finesse it at the end. That was power all the way through. Our ninth lead change of the game. Four of them came in the first couple minutes, and we've had four tie scores tonight. Nip and tuck, to say the least, here at the Great Alaska Shootout tonight. 35-34 Marquette. Coverdale probing his way around. Odell open as they doubled, but Merritt came out to get him. A scoop, a little bit too long. Long rebound finds Fife. He finds Moye. He finds two. First basket for A.J. Moye. And great court awareness there by the Hoosiers on the perimeter, getting that ball inside. Again, Moye is one of those kids that you just have to get him on the court. He makes plays that will win ball games for you. Namaka rejected by Jeff Newton. Indiana piling up some serious block totals tonight. They set a school record for that last year. Moye tied up after he got the offensive rebound. 10.36 to go. This will be a rough one. Strap it on, folks. We've got lots of hoops left. Indiana up one, huh? And a real slugfest. Watch Newton this time get this basketball. And again, you got to be strong with the ball. In this ball game, you can't expect to get a call or anything else. You've got to value that basketball like your girlfriend at a frat party. That thing has to be that important to you. That was just a rip and run to the other end. Expect no calls in this game. That's important. And here come the Hoosiers. Up by one. A ball game where we've had four ties, nine lead changes. Marquette shooting under 30% in the first half. A little bit better now. And they're two big guns. Their backcourt, Dwayne Wade, Cordell Henry, over 50%. Had a jump ball. Now here's a mismatch. Scott Merritt, 6'10", A.J. Moye, 6'3", but he's got a 40-inch vertical. Marquette wins it. Again, Haven't special. Seen Travis Diener in a while. That'll be a special set play drawn up in that timeout. 
They put in four or five this morning to try to catch Indiana with some surprise looks, but they have not flourished at all. There it looked like he ran out of gas at the end of that play. We've got another tie-up and another jump ball coming. Still experimenting with those preseason rules here in the exempt tournament. John Harris about to check in for Merritt. And they'll walk back to midcourt the way they used to when they had a peach basket at each end of the floor. <laughs> a lot of jump balls back then. You know, one of the original 13 rules still in place is the traveling call. That's one of them. I don't think we have time to get in the other 12 or not, but I know that's one of them. Well, I'm glad they put that rule in because it would have been like indoor football had they not. A lot like rugby. this game. A lot like this game. Yeah. There's a hold on Dane Fife. That'll be his second. Third team foul this half by Indiana. On the baseline, the trigger man will be Travis Diener, the freshman guard. Played for his uncle Dick at Goodrich High School in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. He had some good talent come out of there. He was an All-American. Way out there. Won't go for Terry Sanders. Here's Coverdale transitioning quickly for Indiana. So that's an open look, and I think Marquette, they still lack that it's going to go in every time type kid on the perimeter. They got one coming next year in Steve Novak out of Brown Deer, Wisconsin. Odell got Sanders off the floor. Good patience and a nice ball fake by Jared Odell. And for Terry Sanders, that'll be his first. So what, Odell wakes up every morning with these thoughts on his mind. My role is to defend, screen, and play hard. And that's what you get out of 43 in red. 6'8, square jaw, short haircut looking kid. That, that, that's how he's going to play the game. Every team has to have a guy like that. In three years as a Hoosier, he had averaged three points, two rebounds a game. In 74 games, starting a grand total of six games his first three years. But he's one of those guys first in and last out of the gym. Six points for Jared tonight in his senior year. 9.40 to go, Indiana by three. Wayne Wade, a little give and go from Harris. Great work by Fife to stay with it. Hoosiers really stacking up that baseline. And Diener, a good play to corral that pass right at his sneakers. Whoops, Harris never saw it. High risk pass there from Terry Sanders. Well, what a defensive series that time by Indiana. They reacted to that basketball. I talked about it earlier. You watch. They move on the flight of the pass. They don't wait for the receiver to catch the ball to shift into position. High risk pass there. And it was broken up by Todd Townsend, the 6'7 freshman. Played some prep ball at New Hampton, New Hampshire last year and really benefited from that extra year. At that high level of competition. Off for Diener it goes. Not a lot of Chicago kids end up doing that prep thing like they do on the East Coast. Those Midwestern kids, they're more in tune to going to the junior college ranks. Diener. Harris trying to keep it alive. Loose ball will find Dane Fife. Diener just doesn't have the strength right now as a freshman to get things done in traffic. Covered in for Odell. Nicely done. That's an Indiana basket right there. You know, and this, this game fits exactly the way Jared Odell likes to play. Push and shove, bump and bruise, knee someone if he can and get away with it. Tug on the jersey type game, and that's the kind of game that he loves to play. Tom Crean with the timeout. Indiana ahead by five now. Boy, Coverdale, he, he's deceptive with his foot speed and his quickness. He's got that barrel-chested look as a point guard, and he's awfully clever. Mike Davis told us the other night, he's my guy. He's the one that I know is the has the heartbeat and the pulse of my team in his hands when he's on the floor. And, plays the game like you're supposed to play it. Tomorrow, 7 Eastern ESPN 2, BC and number 21, Syracuse starts a college football Saturday for you. That's on ESPN 2. A little bit later on ESPN, the Battle of Georgia, the Bulldogs, and the Ramblin' Wreck. That'll be a beauty. Log on to ESPN.com. You can find out what happened today with Texas and Colorado and all the other action today. TCU coming up big against Louisville and Conference USA. And you can also look ahead to those great games tomorrow. ESPN.com for hoops, football, and everything you need. Cordell Henry out top for Marquette. Coverdale on him. High pick by Townsend. Nothing developing there. Shot clock inside 15. 
Bob, if you're a screener for Marquette and you don't actively seek a red jersey, you're not doing your job. You're not getting your teammate open, and everything falls apart on you. Shot clock at three. Wade, shot clock at one. He picks it in. A little buzzer beater, 12 for Dwayne Wade. A great jump stop by Dwayne Wade. You know, Tom Penders taught that years ago originally at Texas, and a lot of people started picking up on that drill that teaches what he just did. Give and go. Beautifully done. Moye from Coverdale. One mistake. The defender didn't jump in the direction of the pass and gave up a layup because of it. Here's Henry. Coverdale on him. We wondered about this guard matchup. Cordell a lot smaller than Coverdale, who goes 6'2", 200. Shot clock inside 15. They're clearing out for Cordell. He drains it. And it's obvious right now that Tom Green wants to spread that floor a little bit and let his jitterbug work some angles in there. You know, you can't let Cordell Henry back that ball up and get a straight ahead start on you. That's when he's at his quickest. You got to get up on him and make him go side to side. He's not great with lateral foot speed. But he's a jet going straight ahead. 42-39, Indiana by three. Clock running inside the 645 mark. There's a block. Wade. Then he went down court. Nobody could grab it for his layup. And Coverdale knocks down the three. An assist last time, a three this time down the floor. That doubles that lead up to six. Wade makes his turn, and that's going back the other way. Dwayne Wade with his third foul. 6.25 to go. Coverdale, two consecutive good possessions. He gets a give and go for an easy layup for a teammate. Drains the three here. Hoosiers by six. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Long Lasting Clean Zest. When does your shower expire? And by Mitsubishi Montero, the SUV that seats seven. Are you in? 11 Arena, Anchorage, Alaska. Some souvenirs on sale. Jimmy and I waiting for tomorrow night when those prices go way down. We'll catch those guys on the way up. <laughs> I'm still trying to buy last year's T-shirt. <laughs> 45-39. We're having a great time here in Anchorage at the Great Alaska Shootout. Comparing the guards, Cordell Henry, 50% shooting, just like Coverdale, who has had four less attempts. But he's also done some dishing and driving. Both of these guys are very good, experienced point guards. Coverdale just a junior. Cordell is fourth year as a Marquette starter. Look, and I'm telling you, you can't make one mistake on the offensive end. You're going to get burned with it. Just like that time, it was a little bit of a slow pass from the point to the wing, and Wade almost ran through it. Coverdale, the big reason the Hoosiers came from behind to win at Sharp with an 18-point night, six rebounds and four assists. Jared Jeffries for Moye. Wow! Was that Wade? That wasn't a rejection. That was a cannon. I've never seen a block leave the premises any faster than this. I mean, watch this. Wade's going to rotate over. Wham! <laughs> Out of frame. We couldn't even keep up with him. How about that? Seven blocks in the game tonight. Indiana, of course, set a school record with 178 last year, and Jimmy was so impressed with the fact that in Mike Davis's first year, they set a Big Ten record as opponents shot only 38% from the field. Great work by Henry. Here comes Wade. Henry on the diagonal. Blocked by Jeffries. Namaka gets it back for Marquette. Well, great effort by Jeffries because he's the one that had the turnover, but he didn't get his head down. He sprinted to the other end and saved an easy two. After Marquette's 14th steal of the night, Henry turning, jukin, jiving. Oh, my. Cordell Henry with a dozen. He didn't shoot the ball that well last year, and Tom McCrean talked about he took a lot of shots over the summer. You know what else has made him a better shooter? Diener sitting on the bench because the guy behind you that can shoot it yep. will make you start knocking some shots down. And Brian Wardle did take a lot of the Marquette shots last year, averaging 19 a game. All-Conference USA performer. Third all-time at Marquette with 1,690 points. He's playing pro ball now. Fayetteville, North Carolina. And that NBDL, the developmental league. Long rebound. Odell back to fight. Coverdale for three. Back iron. 
long rebound. Cordell's got it. And here come the Eagles down by four. Wade takes the contact on the blocking foul. Didn't take long to go 94 feet right there. Watch the hustle by Jeffries. He turns it over and watch his ability to run the floor and then boom, get up quickly. And those are the kind of things that, that uh, will get you to the next level. I was really impressed with this guy as, as a player, but more importantly as a person when we visited with him. Loves the outdoors, spent a lot of time growing up around that Bloomington area, fishing those farm ponds. And he has impressed me a little bit more physical than I thought he was. I want to see you get him in a boat someday at 6'10". And the free throw down. That was Wade's first free throw attempt of the night after he shot 17 in their first game of this tournament. 13 for Dwayne Wade tonight. He will probably lead Conference USA this year in free throw attempts. And he is a bull with that basketball in his hands. Says one of the biggest thrills about playing in Marquette, being reunited with his eighth grade teammate, Odarte Blankson, both out of the Chicago area. A couple of great kids. Tom Green recruits good character at Marquette. 45-43, Indiana. Well, I think you have some of the same character on the other bench tonight. I mean, if you're going to pick two programs that recruit character, you're looking at Do it the right way, don't they? A.J. Moye on the perimeter, guarded by Blankson. Coverdale, long three, shot clock at five. And way upstairs is Dwayne Wade. That's his sixth rebound of the night. Can he elevate? Well, that's so good when your two guard will crash the boards like he does. Wade gets the shot away. Odell angry with the call as he gets his third foul. After 16 first half three point field goals against Alaska Anchorage, they had eight in the first half, 16 total, and four for 20 tonight. Well, that's the difference between Division I opponents and Division II opponents. And they had a lot of wide open looks against the Seawolves, and wide open looks tonight, not gonna happen. 16 for 24, they ended up on Wednesday. 15 for Dwayne Wade tonight. 405 in a moment, and it's Indiana 45-44. Top Jared Jeffries. Only four points all night. Fife. From Coverdale. Cordell Henry. No, that's Wade poking away at him. Henry's on Coverdale. Jared banks it in. Jared Jeffries. Great patience and poise to score there. Well, he knew that he had two defenders on him and felt the presence of a third one flying high. So you're right. He was patient, waited for the defense to come back down and elevated right over the top of him. Looking for his old eighth grade teammate Wade. High post Namaka. He'll turn to face. Wade going the opposite way of the pick. And he takes a grab. That will be number three on Dane Fife. The strongest survive tonight. Indiana by three. Pizza Hut announces us versus them. Them are the pizzas that skimp on toppings. Us is Pizza Hut, the people that load them on, like on our new ultimate pepperoni lover's pizza, bulging with not one, but two layers of zesty pepperoni, and now with six kinds of cheese. Them never heard of that much cheese. For pepperoni pizza perfection like this, two layers of pepperoni and six kinds of cheese. It's not $12.99, it's just $8.99. $8.99. The new ultimate pepperoni lover's pizza, only at us, Pizza Hut. Hey, y'all, give it. Oh, a little bit, yeah, of your love to me, baby. Yo, you see the man, uh, uh, with the lonely eyes, girl, uh, take his hand, woo, hey, you'd be surprised. Ah, uh, give a little bit, whoa, hey, give a little bit of my love to you. College football Saturday. At 3.30, Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions have turned their season around. Now they're fighting for a bowl game. 
as they look to stop T.J. Duckett and Michigan State. At 745, a great rivalry between two top 25 teams. Top dog David Green and Georgia battle George Gotze and Georgia Tech. Touchdown! Penn State, Michigan State at 3.30. Georgia, Georgia Tech at 7.45. Saturday on ESPN. 47-44 Indiana. We have isolated ourselves from everybody we know getting ready for these games. And I know these clubs have as well. Jimmy, seriously, it's very difficult to get prepared for three games in three days in a situation like this. Haven't they done a wonderful job? Both clubs come in very well prepared. They haven't given up any easy surprise looks, which tells you they're attentive in their scouting reports. They're thorough to detail. I was impressed with both staff's preparation coming in this tournament. You learn an awful lot about your club when you're playing back-to-back-to-back -back -back games this early in the season, and these guys can grasp the task and bring it to the floor for you. Ordell Henry has done that. Eagles down by three. Namaka, six points tonight. Off for Wade. Little short with that one. Pawing away. John Harris can't get it. Then it was tipped up and in. Not sure who got it. It could have been Blankson. It could have been Wade. Odell on the perimeter. He traveled because Namaka denied the entry to Jared Jeffries. Well, you're right. If you don't have all your equipment on in this ball game and lace those tennies to the top eyelet, you could get hurt. The last 240 of this one. One point game, a date with Gonzaga tomorrow night for the Great Alaska Shootout Championship awaits the winner of this one. Namaka on the wing, Blankson on top, Henry. Boy, that'll be a good one no matter who advances because you're going to have great offense out of the Zags against excellent defense out of either one of these clubs. Cordell Henry traveled, a turnover by Marquette earlier today. Or, uh, St. John's beat Oregon State. Tennessee beat Alaska Anchorage. They're playing over in the loser's bracket. And as mentioned earlier, Gonzaga knocking off Texas by three. Proper call, because Cordell Henry didn't come down on a two-footed jump stop. He did that boom, boom at the end, and that's what cost him that third extra step. Coverdale. Out on the wing for Jeffries. They've done a good job of keeping him away from the rim. Look at him put it on the floor, nearly scoring. That's a 6'10 point guard operating on that play. Namaka the foul. That'll be number two on the young man from Sweden. Jeffries, is, is he's really versatile. I mean, at 6'10 to catch that ball on the perimeter and bounce it three or four times, change the direction, and then still have enough strength to go through contact. That's a rare find on this level. Jared Jeffries, his seventh point of the night, had a double-double against Alaska Anchorage. And he may not get his 32nd career double-figure game tonight. You know what else what makes that young man a valued property, Bob, is his ability to pass that basketball. He's, you know, second or third on the team every night in number of assists. He's got great hands. Yeah, he had eight in two games coming here. Here's Wade. Eagles down by three. Wade elevates beautifully. He is so explosive. 17 for Dwayne Wade tonight. And that's against a very tough defensive squad. Again, his first year of college basketball with Dwayne Wade. Marquette making like Duke here and slamming their palms on the floor for some defense. Instead, over the top, a foul on John Harris. I love it when the kids get a basket, go down to the defensive end and slap those palms on the floor. You know something's about to happen, one way or the other. And the bonus situation, not yet. Each team with 16 fouls after that one. Bob, but, but I'm even more impressed, as Diener checks in, when, when clubs play with the same intensity when they miss a shot. I mean, I see a lot of clubs come down after a made basket and get after you for one possession. These two clubs, it doesn't matter if they make or miss. They are going to get after you on the defensive end. Fife back to Coverdale. Penetrating inside the arc. And a charge. Great rotation. Help defense by Marquette. And Coverdale with his first foul of the night with a minute 25 to go. And Indiana up by one. John Harris taking the charge. Yeah, great step in. I mean, got his feet planted, spread out. became He became a big defensive target is what he did. One of those small things that... Not always taught on this level, and Harris did it to perfection. 
21 Indiana turnovers. 49-48 Hoosiers. Clock will run down to a minute on this possession. Wade, contact, no call, and the Hoosiers have it. Marquette's got a good contingent of fans here. They're pretty upset. Mike Davis likes it. He calls the timeout with 101 remaining. Sports Center coming up next tonight with David Lloyd and Steve Berthume, and they'll bring you all the day's highlights and news. What now for Nebraska? After that big hammering they took in Boulder today, Lakers are looking for 10. They've been perfect at home as they take on the Warriors tonight. And holiday hoops, baby. It starts right here. We'll keep it going on Sports Center. Log on to ESPN.com. You can have more on all of that. You know what? Between now and January 1st, the average American will gain seven and a half pounds. Speaking of the holidays, <laughs> watch John Harris step in here. Boom. See what he did, Bobby? Spread out. He became a big help defender. When you rotate to help, don't rotate small. Rotate and get big. You have a better chance of drawing contact, and John Harris did it exactly like you draw it up. I'm, I, I love this game. We're going to go back tonight, get a copy of the tape, and watch it in my room again. We're going to break it down, you and I. Order a pizza and make a big night of it. I can't wait. <laughs> hey, if, if there have been some plays, though, that hey. made that, that the average fan won't appreciate in this game. If I've got to gain seven and a half pounds between now and New Year's Eve, I'm ready to get started tonight. <laughs> if you were a true ESPN analyst, you would tell us how to avoid doing that. <laughs> Don't hang I, out I with you. I need more than just numbers here, okay? Seven and a half pounds is what the average American will gain between now and New Year's. Goodness gracious. Too much food and not enough exercise. I hope the planet can stay on its axis. <laughs> a minute one to go, Indiana 49-48. <laughs> Cover day. I can see you breaking down a film with me. I may have to hit the erase button at some point. Oh, the high low. Jeffries yeah. losing it. Marquette gets the stop. Here comes Cordell Henry. No reason to be in a huge hurry here if you're Marquette. Well, I'm telling you, don't expect a call to win you the basketball game. The way this thing's being played and the way they've officiated it. Officials told me earlier they've had five or six decisions to make on every possession tonight. And I think Dwayne Allen, Mike Littlewood, and Joe Mead have done a good job of letting the kids go at it. Shot clock at eight. Oh, and a foul. No, or is it a kick? It's a kick by Coverdale. Will that refire the shot clock and turn it off? Tell you what, that was an inadvertent kick. Is his foot planted on? Does he just dribble it into his foot? No, he got it with a kick. Good call. Shot clock is off. Marquette with the ball. 21 seconds to go. Well, that was a really good call at obviously a critical time in his ball game. Marquette with the timeout. Their fourth of the night. 21 ticks remaining and Indiana by one a game of a lot of emotion a lot of toughness tonight we saw some of the same in the first semifinal contest when Gonzaga came from behind to beat Texas 67 64 Sports Center next as soon as we wrap up this thriller from Anchorage second semifinal game of the 01 Great Alaska shootout Bob, I know uh, Illinois and Michigan State and Iowa are the people on paper right now in the Big Ten, but Indiana is a very tough out, especially at home this year. The style of play, they're getting better shooting right now from Fife. They're going to defend their tails off, and you switch and look at the other in the bench. And Conference USA, if this is the third best team in the division, uh, Marquette this year, that thing's loaded. Yeah, Cincinnati and Charlotte pick first and second in the American in Conference USA. Marquette 15 and 14 in each of Tom Green's first in the two years. Here we go. Shot clock is off. 21 seconds to go. Marquette down by one. We've had 10 lead changes in this game already. Bob, the last thing you tell your troops in both huddles before they leave when the shot's taken, go get the rebound. That's usually where games are won or lost right here. It's not on the first shot, it's on the second. Henry Verdiner on top, Namaka. He goes in, contact, Wade, yes! Dwayne Wade got that offensive rebound. Timeout, Indiana. Nice call, partner. Seen too many games won and lost by not picking up the loose ball, and Wade was the guy that 
as soon as it even looked like the shot was going to be taken, he made a beeline for the weak side board and came up with it. Watch the play again. Wade knows the shot's going to go up. I'm going to push, shove, whatever I have to do to be there to get it, and boom, with quickness, he scores while other guys are thinking about reacting. You knew contact was going to come. I think it's a good call to not, not blow the whistle, and Wade was there to send in a huge basket for the folks from Wisconsin. 21 points for Dwayne Wade tonight. 30 against Tennessee in the first game of this tournament. He's put his team in a position to win, but 11 long seconds of defense remain for Marquette. Dickow made a big play in the last minute to help Gonzaga win. Will Dwayne Wade decide the issue here? Hoosiers may have one more left in them. I expect Indiana, their first option is to get the ball in the hands of Coverdale and let him attack. They may just bring it across and call timeout and now set up their half-court play. They use up three seconds, eight seconds remaining. Well, this is really good. Coaching staffs are learning about themselves right now. Teams are learning about themselves. I mean, you can't get any more experience and any better thing out of this game than, than Tom Crean and Mike Davis have gotten out of it. This is perfect. This is exactly what you come to Alaska for is a game like this. Certainly you want to win. You're going to take an awful lot out of it. Mike Davis, a 1,200-point score at Alabama. Then he went to Thomas Edison College and got a telecommunications degree. Tom Green, meanwhile, a guy who never played college basketball in his days at Central Michigan in his hometown of Mount Pleasant. What a great matchup of 31-year-old Mike Davis and 35-year-old Tom Green. Here we go. Eight seconds to go. Fife will throw it in. Who's going to come get it? Backcourt, Coverdale. Valuable time. Henry guarding him. Coverdale kicks it. Losing it. And two seconds to go off the hands of Hornsby. Marquette gets it back. The pass wasn't perfect, but it was certainly catchable by Hornsby. Timeout Marquette. How about that? I mean, good job by Wade to force the ball to go to the backcourt to begin with. Now watch, as he's falling down, I mean, that just goes right through his hands. It's at the left shoulder, and Hornby just... Boy, you got to catch before you can score, Mike. I feel your pain, buddy. He was contending. Foul contact on Coverdale as he got rid of the ball. It appeared... This has...